Good evening. This is a beautiful day We're leading up, but well, this is a town leading up to the Christmas holidays and beyond. And we got a lecture for you. It's an eye opener. It should be sweet and short, but it's something that you definitely got need to pay attention to. It's a very good lecture, and it's going to help you think. It's going to help you if you're open minded. It's going to give you an opportunity to see where you are at this present moment of human history. Now, the title of this is The Prince Reality 2018 to 2020. Then it say 2043 and beyond. Now those numbers is given specifically for a reason. And as we go through the lecture, you will see that. The Prince Reality. The Prince Reality 20, 2018 to 2020. And then 2043 and beyond. Now, most people say, well, they're waiting on the return of Jesus, what they know as Jesus the Christ. They have waited on the return of Jesus the Christ. Every 25th of the uh, month, I mean of December, all across America and other parts of the world, especially European nations, they celebrate December the 25th as the birth of the Messiah. Now, there's a lot of truth in that, but it ain't about a physical birth, but yet, they take you through the motions of it as a baby, that Mary birth, and that is a son of, G of God, I would say it like that, of God, and Joseph is the father in a sense, the stepfather, or the, not the biological father. That's how it's portrayed in our tradition. We have planted and rooted that into our existent reality, and it has become real to many Christians, okay? Now, but that story was told thousands and thousands of years before the Christians got it in the time of the Roman Empire. That story was told in ancient Egypt, and the story was, and you can see statues of it, and the story was that there was a, a woman named Isis, which was a god woman, and there was a man named Osiris, which was a god man, and a baby named Horus. And you can see in some of the Egyptian Word artwork of uh, Isis holding Hosiris, some people call him Haru, but holding uh, uh, Horus in her arm. Now that is portrayed, and, and many people look at that as where that story of Jesus and Mary and Joseph originated from. Okay? And there's other cultures have a similar story to that, born December 25th, etc. Now, what I want to do in this lecture, I don't want to upset nobody, I don't want to go too deep into what's right, what's wrong, and all the other stuff. I want to deal with what this Bible is saying now, because this Bible have a literal reading to it, and it have an esoteric reading to it. I'm going to get away from the literal and I'm going to deal with the esoteric. Now most people that are Christians and others have not been taught the esoteric knowledge of the book and the stories. And in this, as I try to show you our time, what existing now and how that story relates to now, and how this prince relates to now, and how a true prince, now let's deal with it now. So this is where I'm coming from. A true prince, a true prince like Israel, who God gave the power with God and with men. A true prince like Moses, who talked with God, 
in a higher level, like Moses, and like Yahshua, or like, I wouldn't use that term as much I would use, Shiloh. Like Shiloh, I would say Shiloh. Like Joseph. I use those characters because what I'm trying to do in this lecture, I'm trying to show you something. I want you to see it not yesterday and the day before. I want you to see this today because this esoteric writing, this writing has such of a writing that the initiates who deal with the initiates of the future, of the initiate at our time, have a story to tell. And that story is a, a true reality that existed. And in this lecture, it's a true reality that is to exist within a prince life. And that's why they tell you there must be a second coming of Jesus to Christ. See, they don't tell you that activity is going to be happening in the heavens. They tell you that activity is going to be happening down here on this earth. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Many got that activity trying to happen somewhere else or they ignore that activity and they just see in the clouds and in the air and they don't see beyond that. What we're going to do, we're going to open the Bible up to you just enough that you can see that activity forming itself and you can see a prelude of it. You can see it's coming now at our time right now. And this is what it is. But only a true prince now could bring about the knowledge and understanding of God and the reality of God at this time. No other prince could do that. Although you have princes all over the world. This prince that this book is talking about is not a regular prince. He's not a regular person. He's not a regular. He is one that God, the Almighty, have created his life to be engulfed in this metric. He's one of the universal order of things. He's no different than the sun shining in the sky. It's just that you can see the sun and you can see the power and the influence of the sun. But he's just like that. And why do I say he's just like that? Because he come from the sun. He come from the sun. And, and coming from the sun, you wouldn't see it as though you learn these things in school and science and stuff like that because right now science don't know what the sun truly is. They know what they think it is. It's a theory. It's a theory. If you go back in history, you'll see that theory revealing itself in different, 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 different ways. Now, and why do I say that? Because some people, when they go off the planet, they go into the atmosphere. And they up there and they find out, man, it's a little colder up here. Are uh, you going to the mountain? People that have never been into the mountains, go into the mountains. Uh, I went into the mountains in Basel, Switzerland. And I realized that the farther you go up, the colder it gets. So I'm getting closer to the sun, but I'm getting colder. I ain't got to say no more. You got to start thinking. Get out of the box, my people. But when we was down in the valley, Round by the lake, it was very, very warm. Very warm. We're talking about like 75 degrees. But when we went in the mountain, snow in the mountain. So the closer we got to the sun, I would say, the closer we got up, the colder it got. So what I'm asking you is simply don't think like they tell you unless you go and experience certain things. Get out the box and begin to understand that there's more to this reality that we're confronted with at this time than what is said in the school system. We are trying to get you to go beyond academics. Go into the esoteric. That's the hidden knowledge. That's the knowledge that, that they hide from you. Whether it's a fraternity, 
sorority, uh, sacred order, or whatever it might be, they hide sacred knowledge from you. And what we're trying to get, get you to open up so you can absorb the sacred knowledge that's in here, that's for you to have. We're not going outside here right now. We're staying in the book. Now let's deal with this. The Prince Reality, 2018 to 2020. 2043 and beyond. Now Revelation, we'll start in Revelation on this. Revelation 11, 15. And the seven seal, and the seven angel sounded. Now the seven angel, they're gonna be about those angels in here. You're gonna see on chapter 8 of Revelation how this is gonna open up, and you're gonna see where it comes with those seven angels. Now I want you to see this because I don't want to get out of this one. Revelation 8, chapter first verse. And when he had opened the seventh seal, now this is the seventh seal. We don't talk to you about these. These seven seals. Each one of these seals have a 1,080 year period of time, but we round it off as uh, 1,000 years. But he's gonna be in this seventh seal, and I want to get this. I want to get this good and straight. I want y'all to get this one. Okay, in this book of Revelation 11:15, you got to start from Revelation 8 to be able to get this to understand this. Now, in Revelation 8, it says, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for the space of half an hour. Now, we're going to cover this quite quick, because if you look at the lecture on the, on the uh, seven seals revealed, seven seals of Revelation revealed, you'll see that. Before you went into that first seal, you had Noah time. Noah lived 900 and some years, as they say. And Noah built an ark. That means that it was 900 and some years and his body was the capability of a 30, 40 year old man. Now, as above, so below. Now, the first, uh, first uh, seal we dealing with was the time of Noah's sons. We, we're just going to use a biblical term as well and leave it like that. Noah's son, Noah's son. And then, that other part of the seal, the next thousand years or 1,080 years, now this is the area of Taurus, it was the high breeze. Why would I say the high breeze? The high breeze took peace from the earth. Who took peace from the earth that you know before Noah time? It was the reptilian beings, the reptilian people, okay? The ones that came and talked to Eve and talked to Adam, but talked to Eve, okay? And so we know in the Bible as that. Now in there, you had the red horse. Now the first horse, you had the white horse. That was Noah's son. And then the next one you have these reptilians, and that was the reptilians that had breeded with the Eve woman, the youth century, I would say, okay? And maybe they breeded with some of the other ones through time. But they were known to breed with the youth century, and that way that hybrid became shape changers, and they became ones that weren't shape changers, but regular people, okay? Of the youth century race. Now, after then, you had the next one. The next one was um, Ares. That's the next two years. You had, and here they were living 120 years. Here they were living 70 and 80 years. You had the third seal. The third one was open. And then you had the fourth one was open. Every, every horoscope, every one carried two seals, okay? Then the next one was Pisces. Now, in this Aries, you had them with the uh, black horse and the pale horse, the black horse and the pale horse in there. You had the black horse and the pale horse, and when you had the black horse and the pale horse, you had them uh, dealing with hunger, scarcity of food and products and goods and services, as they would say back in the day, that you had a problem. Because what happened? This red horse began to bring chaos into the world, and from after Noah's son's time, after what they call Enoch time and all the other ones, then you began to see some, uh, maybe been after before, but you began to see chaos happen. When that red horse came, you brought chaos. And that red horse was what? Known to take peace from the earth. Then he brought on hunger, and then he brought on the pale horse. And after the pale horse, then you had them that they say under the soles of the altar because Rome had became in that time because you're dealing with uh, Pisces then. 
you Rome became, you had that once under the altar, and then the next one you had in that seventh seal was uh, Silas and me that had the Cyclops son being a Cyclops that had moon coming that blood. That means you had the time that slavery occurred. You had them using people for slavery. And what happened? The slavery did not start with the Europeans in the 1500s now. The slavery started with the Arabs, okay, in recorded history. So you got the Arab slavery, and that 7,000 year period, I mean, that 1,000 year period of time called slavery from the Arabs to the Europeans. And then at the end of that, at the end of that, you got that, that seal over. You got one, two, three, four, five, six seal. Now you enter into the seventh seal. And the seventh seal say what it say. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about the space of half an hour. Now, what is this saying? Silence in heaven for the space of half an hour. Now we know in God's time, and I guess they could see that. Could they see this here? Down there? Okay. In, God, in, in God's time, it say God, like, like our thousand days equal only, thousand years equal only one day to the Lord. And we have to remember that. So if a thousand years equal one day to the Lord, well, we're talking about half an hour in heaven. We got to have 48 half an hour divided into 1,000, and it'll give us what we will be looking for here on earth time, which is 20.83, which is 21 years. So what's going to happen? At this time of that seventh seal that's being opened, which is that 1,000 year period of time in here, or 1,080 year period of time, you're going to have a 21 period of time in the beginning of that, that some angels is going to sign. And there are going to be seven of them. And those seven angels are going to have three years of peace. And in those three years of peace, in that 21 year, they're going to be done, done their thing. And that last angel is from 2018 to 2020. He's the one that you're going to see the future branch from. What's going to happen in the future? That means the prince reality must come. From the teaching from that time forward, the prince reality must become the reality. And it must be going forward in that. Because if it was not, you understand what I'm saying? If it was not, then the prince in that Bible ain't the real prince. That's how that go. He ain't the real prince. He ain't the one that supposed to bring peace to the earth. He ain't the one that God uh, that uh, thoughts talked to when he was talking to Jacob and he said, I'm going to make you a prince. He, he can't be that one, people. He can't be, he can't be David because David must come at our time. And this is what it's saying. And David's supposed to bring the reality. David's supposed to build the kingdom of God. So what is it telling you right now? This is the time for God's kingdom. This is the time for God's reality to come through his prince. So his prince must be walking the earth and his prince must be dictating to mankind God's reality. And if that person who say he is who he is and what he said don't happen because he said when the spirit of truth shall come he shall show you all things of thought and the things that are to come hereafter. So that means this person has the power of God to create the reality of this world. And no matter what devil in hell think he got power over him, there is nobody got power over the authority that God made him. Why is that so important? Why is it so important? Because down here, if you study the Egyptian mythology about the one that we call Jesus and it called Horus, that means that in this dark age where self, self supposed to rule, what they call Satan, 
a self proposed to rule, or some people say the devil. That's the time the devil got ruled over the earth. God permitted him to rule at a certain time. They can say that too. Okay. But in that mythology, well, in this dark age, because you're away from Sirius here. And Sirius play a very important part in our in this galaxy and to our planet. It's very important, my people, because Sirius is twice the mass of our sun. And Sirius have 25 times more illumination. It's more illuminated than our sun. So that means this planet or this sun or this star is coming toward Earth as Earth goes this way. And as it comes, there's energy, life energy, just like our sun gives life energy. This gives 25 times more and as it comes, and come in this direction, and they make that turn and go back. But as it comes this way, mankind DNA is making a transformation. And in that transformation, they have a life to live longevity. And that prince must teach them who they are. They are gods. Because when you get to this area, you become true gods. No one has to tell you you are God. No one has to convince you you are God. You walk, you act, you talk, you do things as God do them because not only you are gods, these ones coming from this way are gods too. It's the meeting of the gods in the golden age. This prince is to bring that reality and start leading that forward to that reality that's why I say what it's saying. Let's look at it, what it's saying now. And the seven angels sounded. And there was a great voice in heaven. And they say on the earth, in heaven. That means a high level of authority, a high level of attention. That means the whole universal order is going to be in favor of this prince reality. And you call it the return of Jesus. That's him right there, the prince. Jesus is only a code name. But what I'm trying to get you is not just focus on him, but focus on you because you're moving at this time and you need to know that God want to give you longevity. God want to give you a better life as you move in this procession. That means greater things must happen to you. You must look for greater things. You must understand greater things. Your knowledge must increase and get greater because the fact that you're becoming formed as a God that has control over your body. And that way you could say, death, where's thy stain? Grave, where's thy victory? This is real, my people. People read that stuff, but they don't understand it. They don't understand it. In the prince reality, that is God's reality, that is Allah reality, and Allah reality is the true reality, in that he know his position and where God has placed him. He know where we came from. He know that he had no opportunity to rule before the time that he's in. And time is going to place him in the position of power. Because the universe requires it. So no matter who they stick in positions, it don't matter. Some of them ain't going to live that long no way. So it don't matter. It's what God has planned in the universal order. Because that prince and the universal order is one. He is one with the universe. And what that make him one with God. And you ain't being taught that. You've been taught that someone coming in the clouds and meet you in the air and there you're going to be with the Lord forever and ever more. That's esoteric, my people. The clouds is the cloud technology and the casted records. The air is the age of Aquarius. Right there. That's what it is. But they never taught you the sod. They never taught you that there's layers to the secret. And because of that, our people have been bamboozled. 
And a lot of them are going to go into Christmas, celebrating Christmas, in the old way of seeing things. And a few are going to go in it understanding that it has some higher spirituality to it. And you still have a right to celebrate it because the high spirituality of it. You don't throw it away just because somebody else do it the wrong way. You embrace it and let God teach you how to understand it the right way. You can embrace something if you believe there's something good about it. And that's what I'm saying. I'm not throwing kicking Christmas under the boat, under the truck, bus. I'm kicking the way that they done taught you that lie under the, <laughs> under the bus. Not Christmas. No, not Christmas. Not Christmas. Why would we'll get rid of something that's, that's good? Just because they celebrate don't mean that, and they celebrate it in the way that they taught you how to celebrate, don't mean that they celebrate it in the right way, and don't mean that it wasn't a day to be celebrated. It's a day to be celebrated. It's just that you have learned the wrong way of what it's truly about. What it's truly about. It is in this reality, it is the nine, December the 25th, is the nine months after the spark of the prince, after his spark, after his first spark. That's what it really is. It's nine months. It's nine months. But the prince spark is on December 25th. I want you to see this now. His spark on December 25th. Look at this. I mean, not December 25th. If his spark on March the 25th, okay? If his spark on March the 25th, I want you to see this. March 25th, okay? March, okay, watch this. April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Nine months. December 25th. That's what it's really about, my people. That's what it's really about. That's what the light is really about. The light. The light is the spark that's in his life that shine and show the wise men, the wise women, the way. That's what it's about, showing you the way. The whole thing about that, that light, that star, that spark was to show the wise ones the way. And that's what you have to see. And that's what you would understand. So December 25th is no bad day. It's a good day, an excellent day, really, to celebrate. Now, let's, let's go on down now. Let's go down, okay? And they say, now let's finish this in part here, okay? The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Now, two things you got to see in that. Let's deal with the sword. One part of the sword, the other part of the sword. Kingdom. Kingdoms in a way, is you, your, your, your conscious, your reality, the kingdoms. Your kingdoms, the kingdom, your reality will become the prince reality. The prince reality will become your reality. The prince is to bring peace in the age of Aquarius. You want peace in the age of Aquarius. The prince is going to teach the knowledge of God so you can understand it, and you want to have the knowledge of God so you can understand it. That's what he's about. He's coming to bring God, bring you closer to God. What else is he going to do? He's going to teach you the divine laws of God, the five divine laws of God. He come to bring the cross to you. Now, most people, when they see the cross, they look at a Eurocentric ideology of the cross. They look at a man hanging on the cross for the sins of the world. No, 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 no. That was the slave mentality teaching of the cross. That way of teaching you to cross from there means to let you know black man, white man, or whoever man you is, you get out of order of the Roman government. You get out of order of this, we're going to do the same thing we did to this, did to you that we did to this man on this picture that we telling you he's Jesus. Woo! So that means Rome had fear in the citizens' heart and mind. In the philosophy of the coming Messiah, of the philosophy of what teaching the, the philosophy of the Messiah, but they twisted that philosophy and they did not say what the word was saying, 
They say what they wanted you to hear. And Rome have for thousands of years painted pictures and portrait and made statues to get their peoples in line with their ideology. Even they paint you a picture of what hell look like and they ain't never been to hell. They paint you a picture of what heaven look like and they ain't never been to heaven in their cathedrals and etc. Because that art visualization play a very important part on the control mechanisms of the mind. And they understand that science quite well. And you got to understand why they show you things like they show you. Why they made you a Jesus, a statue, when in the time before he was all black and now he's all white. And then certain time he looked this way and then other time he looked that way. See people, you got to realize that hey, when you being bamboozled, they don't care how far they stretch it. They are gonna just keep on stretching it as long as it works and as long as you submissive to that power and that rule. And you got to see that. But the reality, the prince reality, it is God's reality. And it's saying, and the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ, that means the peoples of our Lord and his Christ, the nations of our Lord and his Christ, because at first I will come through the people, the transformation of the people's mind, character, and their reality into the prince reality, thus it becomes the reality of God, thus you destroy Satan. And you destroy death. And you destroy the power of the reptilian being with the red horse, who have put madness upon the earth, took peace on the earth for over 5,000 years. You need to see this. It's very important now. You're going to see and talk about the Lord and of his Christ. The Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. That means you're going to see him talk about God the Almighty, the Lord God Almighty. And Christ is known as anointed one and Christ is known as a savior. So you got to see it from this angle. Christ, God is with the Lord, present with the Lord, and the Lord, which is the Christ, is the Savior, is present with the Prince, which is the Anointed One, which is the Christ as well. He's the Christ under the Lord God because thought created him to do his job, and God created thought to be a mediator between man and us and this Christ is a messenger in this sphere, which is the prince. That's why in Daniel, excuse me, he's called the Messiah, the prince. And you're going to see that in Daniel 9. I love these books. In Daniel 9, uh, 25. Let me see it. Yeah, 9, 25. And it say, know therefore and understand from understand thought from the going forth of the commandments to restore and to build Jerusalem until the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks, which is seven years. Then it say he's gonna be born in that 360 day. Then it say three score and two weeks, which is 62 when the spot come. Okay, and the spot come March 25th, 2017. Nine months from that is December 25th, 2017. See, there's a lot of prophecy about 2017. You got to understand that because that's when this is talking about. This event, this angel coming, and he's going to work in 2018, 19, and 20. So he got to be here in 2017 so he could do his job. He could help bring back the kingdom of God to earth. And people got to see this. See, people look for something like that to be like ready mix. It's it, it going to be done in a period of time. And, a, you know, it's just going to be done in a year and a day and all this nonsense. When he already told you, it's going to take 30 years from the time of uh, 2013, which is 360 days a year of 144,000 days, which is 400 years. And he said it's going to take 30 years taxing on to that. And you got 1619, August the 1st, 1619, take you on into 
October the 30th, 2013, which end at 400 years or 360 days in the year. Then you got another 30 years on to that. And that 30 years on to that is when this work supposed to start of this prince. And he's supposed to start his spark on, on uh, March the 25th, 2017. So several years done already done been unpassed before he actually start his mission on what he's supposed to be doing to get people to that place, to realize that he have this reality and that reality is one with God. And mankind ain't even teaching this and the church ain't thinking about this kind of stuff, people. And this is the real truth. See, I can't be who I am and be successful telling you a lie. So I can't come telling and teaching you a lie and talking about on this, God have chosen me at this, and Nostradamus got me written in this, and, and Jane Dixon and Ed Case and Madame Mabosky and all this stuff. Come on, people. Come on, people. Other people have the time for the crap. I ain't got time for that. Okay? That's why I constantly tell you, check me. That's why I have left the videos on there. Everybody ain't going to get this. Just like everybody that don't graduate from, from some different classes at the same time. Or graduate from college and all that at the same time. Some people have to take a class over and over again because they can't get it. But some of them take that class over and over again, over again because they know that they need that under their belt and they want it and they want to get their piece of paper or their diploma so they get in, they get down into it. And some people, they just go and just do do because they know I got to get it anyway, let me do it. For those ones who have not really studied those videos like you're supposed to, I ask you to go back and study the videos. Pick out the ones you want to study first. Take the other ones on your leisure. But study the videos. Because the knowledge that I'm bringing you. Is written that I'm supposed to bring you this knowledge. Way before you was born. And way before I was born. Okay. I'm giving you a Christianity. That's different from a Christianity. That you ever seen before. Or knew about. But the Christianity I'm giving you. Is in the book. The royals know the one that I'm teaching you. And that's the one they don't want you to know. The one that I'm teaching you is basically been for them. See, one time when this book was first printed, it was unlawful for anybody, black, white, blue, green, to read it. They didn't want you to read it. They didn't want you to know the truth. There's <clears throat> a truth in this book that could free you and the literal writing of the book, if you don't know the truth that's underneath the writing, it will keep you in a voluntary slavery and you can't get out of it. You cannot get out of it. I don't care what you do. These are the worst chains you ever have right here. This book carried the changes that change your mind. It put a change on your mind that you cannot break or loose without knowledge. You need the true knowledge, people, to break away Else you're going to be in slavery. I don't care whether Biden, Harris, <coughs> or whoever be in the White House, put another Lincoln back in the White House and warn them. It don't matter who you put in there. They cannot free you unless you get free from this book with your mind. You got to know that reality that God has for you, and that's why you see him talk about Israel and how he made Israel a prince and give him power with God and with man. This is a man-made book that have a God knowledge inside of it. And that's the power that he have. Thought brought him the book. And it's crucially important. Now let's go on. Let me go on because I mean I'm stretching this one out. But I want you to get this truthism. This is what is important because I told you I'm going to tell you things that's for you now. Right now you need to connect to this. This Prince reality. I don't care where he at. I don't care where he at. All y'all came out. Of, everybody came out of the darkness. Out of the darkness. Now, you got to see what God is going to do. You got to see what God want to do right now. And not how you going to see it. Because everybody came out of this dark age. That's why the world is in so much turmoil right now. Because it's trying to adjust to this. 
and it don't know how because it's been like a top spinning out of control. And now it got to get back in control and the prince reality is the control mechanism with the teaching of God's five divine laws, which is the cross philosophy that Jesus himself, as they say, as the initiates say, taught. What did he say? If any man fall after me, that's male and female, first deny thyself, take up thy cross daily and follow me. That's what the cross was all about. And they never told you that. They told you it was about a man hanging on it. And the cross was a philosophy of knowing thyself. A philosophy of this. This is your cross. This is what that philosophy was all about. You knowing thyself and what you're supposed to do. In the beginning, God bless man. That's morals. You got to have the control of the moral mechanism of yourself, of your reality in God. And that's what the prince is coming to do. To bring the world out of chaos into unity and equality with God. That's peace. And this is the first law, as we say, of God. And then the next one, he said, be fruitful. Everything economically come from the earth. Then he said, multiply. That's sociology. You put, no, I'm sorry. That's sociology. You put your ring on your left hand because that's the hand that you tie yourself with with your spouse, your community, your fraternities. And then what he said after that, uh, he said, morals, bless them. He said economics, he said social, then he said subdue, political. That's why you hold your right hand up in the code of law. Then he gave you a diet and appetite. Those are the five areas of life. That's what this book is truly about. And they lied and told you December 25th was about a man being born and later he died and hung on a cross for the sins of the world and the Jews done it to him and the Romans carried it out. <laughs> Woo! That's a hard message and I grew up as a child believing that. And they tell you to believe it. They don't tell you to research and then do your homework to find out what's really going on. They don't tell you that. They tell you to believe just the history that this Bible says and no other history. And that's why we don't went wrong because the Bible tells you to study to show thyself approved. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And we need to understand that. Now, Isaiah 43, 10 to 12. Ye are my witnesses, said the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen. Thought ye may know and believe me and understand thought. I am he. Before me there was no God formed. Neither shall there be after me. God formed Machazadeh, which is thought. He formed him to be a mediator between man and God. And this is what they're telling you. But they twisted it and they created you a Jesus 200, 2,000 years before his time. And they brought in the Roman, brought in the, the uh, Vastasi and, and, and Titus and, and the Alexanders and, um, and some of the other uh, family, Josephus, the Flavors and all that. They, they brought you this story and they backdated and they made this person be at their time because they wanted to have the power to rule over you. They wanted to number those stars a lot of more times in your cultures and other people's culture. They ruled in the way that they knew how to rule and they had you submissive. And now they, they ruling the entire world. The entire world on that ideology that they took and throw the truth to the ground and they mixed this that they had and they gave it to you and they painted you pictures and you believe the pictures because mankind is attached to visualization a lot of time more than he's attached to the written word and this is what happened now thought is telling you who he is and it's right in the scripture I didn't write it in there it was already in there I just translated it and wrote it out I changed it from that T-H-O-T -T, to thought 
T-H, means from that T-H-A-T to thought T-H-O-T. What they did, they just took this O and they made an A out of it, or they did it this way and came that way and made an A out of it, and that way they deceived you. It's simple to deceive you when they got you going for thousands of years and they got you with a Roman army saying that this is the way you're going to learn it and you ain't going to learn it no other way and all that and force feed you and then after the army, they ain't need the army. What they would do is they will embarrass you and make you think that you are in a different arena when you don't believe in Jesus, that you ain't worthy to be, you know, when they talk about black and white privileges, they gave that white boy a heck of a privilege over everybody else in the world. And he was only a drawing. He was only a drawing. And that's what they've done to you. So let's go on. Let's, let's leave this. We're going to go over here. And then we're going to finish up. Where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? We begin to see what God is going to do. The messenger of the prince of the Messiah the Prince of this messenger of this son of man, which is to come at this time, is to tell you the events that's going to happen before they happen. And you are to be able to walk in renewal in that environment and become the people that God wants you to become. Become the kingdom dumbs that God wants you to be. So you could be the leaders of the it's a term they use uh, peoples of renown. Now, where do we go from here? Now, we're at the year 2020 right now. We, in America, we have an election that doesn't happen. We have one president want to say, well, you know, it was fraud. You took the election from me, da, 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 da. And then you have another group of people saying, no, we won, and it's time to get your butt up out of there. Okay. So you got two of them, and then you're saying, they are saying that when the president, the old one, is still in there, and he's still the president, so what would he do to change that if he don't want you in there? We are in a suspense. So let's leave it like that. Don't try to prejudge something. Just know that we in a suspense because the prince or the person that know the knowledge and know the arts done let you know that you're going to have a civil war and a world war and you're going to have a territorial transformation from people from one place to another, what they call the earthquake, from moving from one place to another. It doesn't say that, so we're going to see. If this person is who he say he is, you should see these kind of events come about in the very near future of this nation. Now, what do we see here? Where do we go from here? Isaiah 43, 11 through 12. And even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. And this is this is thought saying, there is no Savior. Beside me there is no Savior. So we don't know that yet. The uh, church world don't know that yet. So it got to be a revival. So because it said that he would be, uh, he would rule forever and ever. And that means thought saying that there is no Savior. He is the Savior. There is no Savior but him. I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. So we got to understand this. Beside him there is no Savior. I have declared and have saved, and I have shown. When, when there was no strange God among you, therefore ye are my witness, said the Lord thought, I am God. And what the word God mean? God mean that to and that's where the Greek uh, didn't understand the word neta and the word for neta, so they use the word God. So when you use the word God, it simply means in the Egyptian language, a neta. Okay, now, what he's saying is that I have declared and have saved. So when you be talking about, oh, this Eurocentric Jesus saved you and did what he did? No, it was thought in the background doing all this. When you pray for your car and your house and all this stuff, it was Machazit in the background doing this because he knew your heart and he didn't keep you from the blessing because he knew you were going to learn later. In this lifetime or you were going to come back to another lifetime, but you were going to learn. And this is what he said, I have saved. That means ain't no Eurocentric man called Jesus and all that saved you. No, no, no. 
Thought is telling you, and it comes around and it's book here. See, they, it's in the book. They ain't take it out of the book. That's one thing they didn't do. They did not take it out of the book. They just hid it in the book. That's what it is. So you, the, the Eurocentric Christianity, you don't learn. The true Eurocentric Christianity, or the true world royal Christianity, the ones at the top was a royal, because everybody else the book was forbidden to have. But the royals at the top, they understand this stuff, but you don't understand it. You haven't understood it because you didn't know the odds. And they're telling you. That's why you would hear Ptolemy, Ptolemy uh, the third, one of Ptolemy the first grandson said, thought healed me. When I read it, I said, wow, thought healed me. Why would he say that? Because he knew what was underneath it. He knew what his father had placed underneath it. And he knew that thought was the real person to save you. Thought is the real person to heal you. He knew that. But see, they hid it from us. So we went off Jesus. And although Jesus wouldn't deliver us because of the timing and because we didn't know the truth like we should know it, he still did what he said he going to do. I have declared and have saved it. Past ten, I have saved it. So he have did stuff for you without you knowing about it. And I have shown when there was no God, no strange God among you. Meaning when you didn't have a statue of, of Jesus and you didn't have a statue of uh, Yahshua and you didn't have a statue of Zeus and you didn't have a statue of, of all the other statues and all this other crap, these strange God, he was there before all that even existed. And that's what he's trying to tell you. Therefore, ye are my witness, said the Lord, thought, I am God. Now, Genesis 32, 28. Now, he's talking to uh, Israel here, Jacob here. And he said, and he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. Israel. L-E-I-S. L-E-I-S. You take this S. You put it this way, you flip it, you got L-E-W-I-S. That's what that word means, Israel. Israel is Lewis. For as a prince, now here you go, who is he telling you? He's telling you that this Israel here, this Israel is a prince. See, they have looked at Israel and the church have taught you Israel, somebody happened about 4,000 years ago and all that stuff, people. Wow. And don't get me wrong, I, I have sympathy for you and for many others who learned that way. I Don't get me wrong. And I don't expect to get it and shake it out of your head right now. I don't expect to shake it out of everybody's head right now. Only the chosen ones of God are going to get this out of their head. So everybody, no, 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 no. I ain't looking, I'm trying, but I ain't, I don't. it's not up to you and your obedience to your God. See, I don't tell you to go pray to me and ask me, son. Go, go pray to God. Go pray to your God, the one that you believe in from the heart. See, when you pray to God from the heart, you are actually praying to thought, praying to Allah, and you are getting, your deliverance are getting saved, or getting out of that condition through thought, because that's what he's saying. So it don't matter whether you, how you do it, just do it and believe from your heart that you truly talking to God. And he's going to do, and he's going to deliver them. And that's what it's about. See, you can't come and, and do this thing once you learn this knowledge of who this is. Then you say, well, I ain't going to give a damn what that Negro say. I'm praying to my old Jesus, white man or no white man. You a century man or no, you a century man. Statue or no statue. See, now you're trying God now. See, before you was innocent. But no, now you were rebellious. And you're going to have a problem then. That will put you on a problem. Okay? See, you can't know God and believe that that's truth in what I'm saying and then turn around and rebel against it openly. Whoa! You don't want to do that. This is not the time to display that kind of energy because the universe will fight you and you don't even know what's happening. And you're wondering why your life getting so chaotic because you choose to go in the area of chaos and the prince and this philosophy is taking you into the area where you have peace of mind. And you don't want to fool with chaos. Chaos ain't good, people. 
Uh -uh. People, you can be stubborn. You want to be stubborn. Never want to desire to go against a, a messenger of God when, when in dealing with the doctrine. And so now, nah, a true messenger of God. Right? Yeah, and like I say, even him, you check him. Check him. And that way you'll know. Okay, let's deal with this. In Revelation 14, 1 to 2. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him a hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Now, what did I tell you this was before? The lamb, the lamb is the prince. And this is his timing. Right now is his timing. This time that we're dealing with, 2018 to 2020, that's his timing. That's the timing where he's supposed to come forth. Okay? Now, you're in that time right now. Between 2018 and 2020, that's the time he's supposed to come forth. In that timing, around that timing, around 2014 is his spot. And he's coming on 2018, 19, and 20, and beyond. And you're going to see that. That's why I use these dates the way I use these dates like this. So you'll know that. So what I'm trying to show you is that this is the time. What I'm trying to say, people, listen to the timing. Listen to the timing. Listen to where you at. This is the timing now that you need to pay attention to. Okay? Forget what's going around you. You understand it as much as you need to understand it, but don't and root yourself down into it thinking that this Eurocentric man got power to control the direction of the universal order right now. It's the universal order and God done told you that he have given him power and that this is where it's at. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob but Israel for as a prince has thy power this is power, people. This is power. See, you look at power as a Superman type person, somebody, an avatar type person, in which he is an avatar. But you look at it as a TV avatar and TV Superman and all this other stuff, jump and pick up tall buildings and all that. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It ain't about that. Power is to change the ideology of the mind of man. That's power. I had a general, I heard a general say this, and I don't want to make it too long. I heard a general say this as I was out to the beach one day and I was on the boardwalk area on the, the step area going uh, across the little sand dune to the beach area. And the general was standing up there because Jacksonville was a military town. The general rights was standing up there and he was sitting there. And some kind of way we struck a conversation. And I was Fabulous, fabulous. I said, what did Jim say? I was like, why did he say it? The general said, you know, the man that I admired the most was Martin Luther King. And he was a white gentleman, tall gentleman. And I said to myself, and then I asked him, why? Why would you say that, being a military leader and all that? He said, because what we could do, what we do, ain't like what Martin Luther King do. Martin Luther Luther King could do stuff greater than what we did. I said, well, explain it. And he said, well, we'll go into a nation and we can bomb it. We could go tear it apart. We could disrupt it, et cetera, et cetera. And then them people ain't gonna love us no more. And they ain't gonna, they gonna do like rebel against us more than anything. And we could get them uh, in order, but they, we got them in order at the point of a gun. At the point of a gun. But Martin Luther King could do it differently. He'd do it differently. Martin Luther King go into the mind of man and he teach him a philosophy. And that passive philosophy that he teach a man, a teach a people, it makes them do things that normal people won't do. It makes them be submissive to the will of rightness. Wow. When that man told me that, I thought about that, and I realized that, you know, that kind of skill could be used two ways now. You could get them, and you could get them submissive to what's right, and you could get them where they give their whole life for what's right, the way you see it, your reality. 
Okay? Or you could use that same philosophy, comes out of this book here, because Martin Luther King was a minister. And you could use that same philosophy, but find the depths of it, and find out that we will make it to the promised land of the people. And you can use that philosophy. And you could change nations by letting them see what the cross really means. Those five divine laws. And know and teach every race that he have and she have a responsibility to carry those five divine laws as a holy, holy relic in their life. Thus, you're going to change the world for the better. That's what the philosophy is truly all about, my people. That's what we are doing. That's what the prince is to teach and let them understand that there must be peace upon this earth now. There must be things that Christmas really celebrate and really all about some joy. And we need to see this. Revelation 14, 1 to 2. And I looked, and lo, the Lamb stood on Mount Zion. That means the conscience of the mind. It tells you about the kingdoms. That means the conscience of the mind. He stood on Mount Zion. That means he stood in the power. In the power. What does it say? The power of God. We got that at. Let's deal with that. The power with God. That means he's in the power with God. That means he's in a consciousness with God. His direction is God led, and etc. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in their forehead. This 144,000, as I told you and taught you before, is a circumference of time, not 144,000 people. In that 144,000 is a group of peoples within that circumference of time, 144,000. And in that group of people, those peoples are going to be multiplied. And through time, those people are going to get, be, they're going to be worldwide. And that philosophy of that prince, that reality of that prince is going to be in those people's life. And that's why John said, I see the number that no man can number of all nations and kindreds and tongues. See, that's the reality that God want to bring to mankind and it's found in this book right here. But it's not a spook coming out of the sky to do this. It's one that God have shaped and created and put down here on this planet and have went through some of the same things you went through. So he could come out on that third day, on that seventh millennium and resurrect the world. That's what it's really all about. And that's what December 25th is a celebration of the nine months of that particular person's spot, leading to the development of a king, prince, on the planet. And they don't want that. And they're going to do everything in their political power to keep that from happening. Biden and Harris is dead, and they're going to utilize them to do what they can. Trump, how him and Pence going to play in this, I don't know. But yet, the future is there for us to see. But you better focus. There could be possibly something that kicks off a civil war, and there could be something that kick off a world war within the next few years. And you need to see this. This is what we have to see. We got to know these truthisms. We got to know where God is taking this. And I heard a voice from heaven. This voice didn't come from nowhere. It came from heaven. That means a high level of energy, a high level of truthism, a high level of direction toward what we call the, the universal desires and order for mankind. As the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder, you see in nature and the whole universe is getting involved with this. And I heard the voice of hoppers hopping with their hops. That mean joyful. That mean it's going to be an age, a time of peace. 
a time when that red horse uh, desires and etc. are going to be diminished, that taking peace from the earth, that's warfare and all that. It's going to be a time when that's going to come to its end. And it's saying in Revelation uh, 14, it says, And there these are they which follow the Lamb wheresoever he goes. That means they follow that reality. They connect themselves with that reality. And we need to see that. Now, I only got a few minutes and I like you. Could they see this here? I need to move this over. Now, what we're doing, we're trying to raise the funds to take this to another level. I want all of you, all, all of you get a chance. I want you to look at our lectures and I want you to see what is happening to our lectures. I hate the why in them, but I have to say, so you understand why it's necessary for us to raise the funds we we're trying to raise to get this to another level. Back a year ago, so uh, you look from from the beginning that we started because you go on our site and you look at it from beginning from where we started. We started out getting a lot of tips. In the beginning, we didn't get but the whole year, first year, about twenty seven thousand hits. The next year, we got close to four hundred and fifty thousand hits viewers. What happened then, it should have took a snowball effect and kept going up and up. But what they did, they decided to limit this teaching, this princely reality, this teaching that we have here. They wanted to limit it, and they didn't want so many people to have it. And although a lot of more viewers could be seeing it than what they're showing, but what they have done, they have took the videos and they try to keep it down to no more than 2,000 people. See the video. Some of the videos is much better than the ones that we did, and they had hit seventy thousand, you know, or six or something thousand years ago, and now they still got them at six or something seventy thousand. See, and we know that. We know what's going on. We know a little bit about what's going on, but we know that in order to make that a, override that, we need sufficient funds for advertisement. We need to have our face in the media's eye now. We need to be on television, we need to be on radio, we need to be on talk shows, we need to be doing a lot of things now to get this to the next level. I believe by being who I am that God is putting in my mind that this is a way to go, to start. I know a prophecy came to me many years ago and it said, you're going to receive some keys, which I have received certain keys. There's other keys. You don't yet get them, but the ones I understand, the keys of the knowledge are unlocked this scripture by opening the cast through reckless and some of the other stuff. You're going to receive some keys, some big, big money, and you're going to do a lot of traveling. Are you ready for it? I believe that it's the time that being ready, I know we have a COVID, but yet there's ways that you can get to certain towns or certain areas and you can reach certain people. Sometimes you may be reaching them by talking to them on the air, right in their time on the radio station. Or uh, you may find a place where an open place that you can meet them so they could be there and you could be there and they could see you and they could bump elbows with you or some of them shake your hand or whatever way they need to do it at that time. You see what I'm saying? But you need to be closer to your peoples and we want to be closer to our peoples and we want to be able to bring that abundance of individuals that God has designated for us to be able to teach so they can be able to have the things necessary to joy and all the other things that they need to have in their life. Okay, now we started off with $100,000 which that's how we started. We done got I say real, real, when I really look at it, it's about a third of the way, but some of that was the other funds being added to that. We looking to get at least $70,000. We was trying to get it before Christmas time, but what we're needing, we need individuals to step forward. Okay. This is Lewis Armstrong Ministry at 7536 Jana Lane North, Jacksonville, Florida, 32210. And also Cross Rock. Incorporated. You can reach it at Givelify. You can put it at this address, 7536 Jane Lane, North Jacksonville, Florida, 32210. Or you can go on Givelify on the Charitable in your mobile app. Also, PayPal at ArmstrongLewisJ at gmail.com. That's PayPal, ArmstrongLewisJ 
at gmail.com. Now, I wrote that, and I want to talk about that and show you how to get that, and Sister Corinth even have more information on it. But what I want, this is, this is our time. This is this arch that I'm looking at right here. See, God showed me a vision about the support mechanism, support of this organization. And I seen a strong lady step forward. And in that vision, they were making sure I do right things and stay right. And they were still supporting me. They was they was strong beams within this building that covered me and supporting me, okay? And I need to see those individuals come forth. See, they know who they are. But I need to know that they are there for that purpose. And I want eight of them. I want to put their name here. Who they are, whoever they are, they know who they are. I want eight of them named there. Now, we're trying to get individuals to bring about 70, 70, 75,000 dollars, somewhere in that area remaining. And I need these eight to help carry these beams of the others. I need, I need some, I need some real people now that God showed me. And you know who you are. I don't know you like God knows. I don't know your financial status like God did. But when he showed me something, I believe what he showed me, so I know you there. So I'm asking you to step forth. Step forth and bring about this $75,000, please. Bring about it. This $75,000 I'm asking. Eight of you to make sure, and the other ones just bring in what you can to help the organization out. But I'm asking eight. And I want to be able to put eight of y'all names on this board, and y'all eight names gonna not only be on this board, but as long as this organization's there, we're gonna look back at the time that the minister asked the eight to step forth, and the eight did it. The eight did it. Let me see who we got in our audience, see who we got, who really working with God to make things happen. And I'm asking you. I'm asking you to step forward so we can put your name on this board so we can know who you are and there'll be a special place in this organization as she showed the credits for this group here. It will be a special place for them. It'll be a special and as and Minister Corinthian, Sister Corinthian will be glad at the end of it to put y'all name, y'all eight names there to show us. Now I ask this. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us this opportunity. Thank you, Father, for permitting me to be a voice among your chosen people. Thank you for showing me who I am so I could be awakened to man no thyself. I thank you for all of your sons and your daughters and all the individuals that's under the sound of this voice, my Lord. Bless them, Father. Bless them that they will be able to have joy and have it more abundantly. Some of people joy ain't about how much money they got, but sometimes it's about their health. Sometimes it's about their children or their wife. But God bless them. Sometimes it could be about the job of their job environment. But I say to God, God bless them. Help our people. Because I'm standing here believing in your word. Believing in you. And I ask you to share that love that you have given me. And you have given others. Share them to the many individuals in this audience that need that love. That need that other step that need that as a spot that they could feel good about the direction in which you carry, carry their life. And I say this, thank you, Heavenly Father. Amen.